Hello and welcome to PersonalTrainerExam.com. Today I'm going to be talking about the sliding filament theory of muscular contraction. Muscle fibers contract by shortening of their myofibrils due to actin filaments sliding inward over myosin filaments which causes the muscle to shorten and develop tension. During muscular contraction, the Z lines are pulled toward the center of the sarcomere, the H zone shrinks, the I band shrinks, and the A band remains the same length. Quick review here. The Z line is the thin dark line of structural proteins running through the middle of the I band. The thin filaments, actin, troponin, and tropomyosin are anchored at each end of the sarcomere by Z-lines. And remember, each segment of a myofibril from Z-line to Z-line is called a sarcomere. And a sarcomere is the smallest contractile unit of skeletal muscle. Review again, the H zone is the region in the center of the sarcomere where only myosin filaments are located. The thin filaments, actin, troponin, and tropomyosin, they don't reach this far into the A-band in a relaxed muscle. The I-band is the area in two adjacent sarcomeres that appears as a light band and contains only thin actin filaments. The A-band appears as a dark band because thick myosin filaments partly overlap the thin actin filaments. And remember, skeletal muscle, the reason why it's striated is because of the alternating dark and light patterns that appear across the length of the muscle fiber. In this picture here, we have a relaxed myofibril, and the blue lines are going to represent the actin filaments, and the red lines are going to represent the myosin filaments. This band here is called the dark band or the A band and the reason why it's darker is because there's an overlap of the thick myosin in this example those are the red lines filaments and the thin actin filaments which is represented by the blue. So as you can see here there's red, blue, red, blue, red, blue that's the overlap that's why the A band the dark band appears darker. Now, you see these zigzag lines on the side here? These lines are called the Z lines, and those run in the middle of the I band. Okay? And the I band, that's the area in two adjacent sarcomeres that contains only actin filaments. And we know that a sarcomere is each segment of a myofibril from Z line to Z line. So we have two sarcomeres in this picture here. This section right here, that's the area in two adjacent sarcomeres that contain only actin filaments. And that is the light band or the I band. Now in the center of the sarcomere between both Z lines is an area where only the myosin filaments are located and that area is called the H zone. That's this section here. As you can see, the thin actin filaments, they don't reach this far into the A band. This is only going to contain myosin filaments. So in this example, it's only the red lines, and that's going to represent the myosin. This picture here is of a contracting myofibril and what's going to occur is the myosin filaments are going to pull the actin filaments inward towards the center of the sarcomere and attached to the actin filaments are the Z-lines. So again, the Z-lines are the zigzag structure here on both sides and they run in the middle of the I band. So since the myosin filaments are pulling the actin filaments toward the center of the sarcomere, you're also going to have the 
Z lines being pulled toward the center of the sarcomere as well since the actin filaments are attached to the Z lines. Now, we talked about in the previous picture the H zone, which is in the center of the sarcomere that contains only the myosin filaments, or in this example, the red lines. And as you can see here in the center of the sarcomere, in a contracting muscle or a contracting myofibril, you're going to have blue lines coming in. That's the actin filaments because they're being pulled by the myosin filaments toward the center of the sarcomere. So they're going to take up that space where previously there was just myosin filaments located. So the H zone is going to decrease during muscular contraction as actin filaments slide inward over myosin filaments. Now since the actin is coming in and since the Z lines are attached to the actin, the I band is going to decrease as well in a contracting muscle or myofibril. Now the red or representing the myosin filaments, that's going to stay the same length. That's not moving. The only filaments that are moving in a contracting muscle is the actin filaments. So the myosin filaments are pulling the actin towards the center. So that A band, that dark band, it's going to remain the same length. It's not going to change. Now some more review. Actin is a contractile protein with an active site for binding a myosin globular head. Actin is also the main protein of the thin filaments. In this picture here, the circle beaded structure is the actin filament. Troponin is a protein molecule located on the actin filament. And calcium attaches to troponin when released into the myofibril. In this picture here, this red cylinder is going to represent troponin. Again, the beaded structures here is going to represent the actin. Tropomyosin is a protein molecule located on the actin filament in the groove of the double helix. In a relaxed muscle, tropomyosin blocks the active binding sites on the actin molecule, preventing myosin cross bridges from binding with actin. And this red rope looking structure is the tropomyosin and we just said that the tropomyosin is going to block the active binding sites on the actin molecule which prevents myosin from binding with actin. Myosin is a thick protein filament shaped like a golf club with globular heads or cross bridges projecting from it at an angle at regular intervals. So here's a picture of a myosin filament and these golf club looking structures here are the myosin globular heads. Another name for these guys are cross bridges.